Good morning um, to the, all of you. Um, this morning, we're going to be talking about summative feedback. Last week, we talked about formative feedback. Summative feedback is just a little bit different in that instead of assessment for learning, kind of prompting people, giving them feedback in order to improve, this is the assessment of learning. What did they accomplish um, during the time that they were with you? Um, and so just like the rest of our preceptor series, we will have CEs involved um, with this. Um, here are the instructions for that. And after the session, um, Barb will send you the information about the session so that you have this information um, in case you want to read through it. So first of all, summative feedback. Um, sometimes we call it summative evaluation or just final evaluation. And um, I kind of made up a definition for this based on all the reading that I did. So for me, it's a cumulative evaluation, evaluative information that's communicated back to the learner or the student that is based on course benchmarks or benchmarks um, if you're doing orientation with a new employee intended to track that achievement and growth for the purpose for students for academic advancement and to document learners next learning objectives. Now, I added that last part because at the end of every evaluation, um, it, it kind of says, okay, here's all our evaluative information, but what's next? And sometimes when evaluations aren't the best, it's nice to put that what's next piece in there. Um, and then I gave you just a little bit of a reminder as to what, um, what formative feedback was from last week. Okay. Anybody have other thoughts about what summative feedback or evaluation might look like? Nothing comes to mind on this one. I'm not, it's the first time I've actually heard that term before. Okay. Um, sometimes people just call it evaluation, cumulative evaluation, final evaluation, as opposed to summative. Summative simply means the sum of, um, and that's where it got its name. Okay, so feedback yeah. possibility. So one of the things that we had kind of talked about last week was about um, feedback and the preceptor lets the student know maybe that decrease some of the negative responses. And, and as I was, was preparing this, I thought this was really something to revisit um, because we see a lot of incivility in nursing. And I thought, boy, maybe if we discussed this professional responsibility of providing feedback for your students, for your peers, for your colleagues, it might improve that receptiveness to feedback and then overall decrease any of those emotional or negative um, defensive responses. And it could maybe decrease some of that incivility that we have. And so when I thought about um, that, I thought, you know what, we really place a lot of emphasis on giving feedback because we've been talking about formative and now summative or final evaluation um, and giving this feedback. But we really haven't talked a lot about how to seek feedback. And maybe that's one of the things we want to talk to our students about is how to ask for feedback from each other. And then we can kind of do this balancing act between um, feedback and incivility or helping people be more civil and expectant of that feedback, so less defensive. So it was just one of those things that I, I thought about. I thought, you know what, I'm going to put that in there. Any thoughts about that? Okay. Hearing none, I'm going to continue on with uh, Assume sorry, Becky, I couldn't oh, get look. myself off of mute. I, I was okay. going to agree with you. Um, I, I do think that sometimes the perception of incivility, especially from a learner's perspective, may just be how they're interpreting feedback or how whoever's giving it to them gives it to them. They might not be skilled in giving feedback. And mm -hmm. so maybe a little bit on each side, but that's a real interesting tie. Thank you for sharing that. I, mm -hmm. I have not thought about it in that way yet. Okay, great. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and continue on then with summative feedback. Just like last week, I'm going to give you a couple of characteristics. So we talked about this being a mutually agreed upon predetermined process. That's why the star is there. We had that last week for the formative feedback. However, this feedback is given at midterm usually and then given as a final 
of evaluation. And it still includes that self-evaluation piece. Um, at least at case, we ask the students to do a, a, a self-evaluation both at midterm and final. It is a more formal written evaluation where formative feedback can be kind of on the fly, verbal, kind of an exchange of information. We still look at those professional characteristics, their skill development, their knowledge acquisition. We also want to make sure that we keep it psychologically safe and give a neutral delivery. Those are things that are, again, kind of in common with formative feedback. It does um, provide evidence for the student learning and student professioning, I'm sorry, proficiency. And that proficiency or learning is compared to this, these predetermined benchmarks. So I know, Tanya, you probably received a um, evaluation form or a set of objectives from the student that you were working with. Mm -hmm. um, guess when you orient somebody, um, you guys have a set of objectives that you're measuring your person against. Um, and then on the on the final evaluation, you kind of make only you make a comparison to the benchmarks, but then you also make notes about progression. And then, like I said, kind of that future, what's next, planning on that evaluation form. What do you guys think about that, or anything to add about characteristics of summative or or final evaluation feedback? I had the form with Sabrina um, where we just basically talked about. This is, you know, when you first started and I noticed this progression. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I did with her uh, form that I filled out with this. Okay. Okay. Great. And that's usually how it works for students. Okay. Now, we talk about, you know, giving feedback, but we always don't uh, think about, well, how do we prepare to give that feedback? So we just talked a little bit about the evaluation form. Um, so you get that evaluation form to make sure that you keep on, on, on top of what you're tracking for the student. You want to review that pretty often. Um, and you might even want to make notes on your, your hard copy form or your computerized electronic form. Um, keep notes on things on, you know, maybe weekly kind of think back on the week and, and what was happening. But you can remember at the end for the, the final evaluation. The other thing is, is that you don't want any surprises on that final or summative feedback um, form. So anytime you find yourself writing something um, that needs improvement during the course of the semester, um, you want to make note of that in a formative feedback way so they're not surprised to see it on their final evaluation. The other thing to think about is as you're writing these is that you want to use affirmative kind of a learner orientation language so that you can celebrate the student's accomplishments um, when you're writing down deficits, you want to comment on the progress that they have made during the semesters, but then also make those suggestions for growth and future orientation. Um, with that, again, bent on what do you want to learn next? What's the next thing coming? Not necessarily based solely on their performance on that one task, but what are we going to move towards? And that brings you to the, kind of your concluding remarks where you want to write some objectives for that next course or your transition into practice. Lastly, you want to psychologically prepare yourself. You want to be genuine. You want to be confident when you give the, the information to the learner. And that will ultimately increase the student's trust in this whole process. Do any of you have any thoughts about kind of preparation or how maybe you prepare yourself for giving feedback? Okay, hearing none, we're gonna go to the next one. Um, so I talked about that paper form or that evaluation form. So this is an example from an evaluation and we're going to talk specifically about midterm evaluation at this point in time. So you've had them, the student, for about half a semester, and you want to give them feedback. You're summarizing, here's where you are until this point in time in the semester, or halfway through the time that they're going to be with you. So usually the directions go something like, please use each one of these rating scales. Sometimes it's a one through five. Sometimes it's this scale where you have three levels of satisfactory needs improvement or unsatisfactory. Unsatisfactory being the lowest level. So you can read through the definitions there. Um, just take a minute to do that. 
the thing you want to make sure is that always on an evaluation form, you have this kind of rating scale and the definition of the ratings. Okay, so I picked out one of the items on an evaluation. This is an actual evaluation form. So I picked one out about feedback because we're talking about feedback. So this is actually an item on um, under communication skills. And it says that the student will demonstrate ability to receive and provide feedback and proactively seek opportunities for improvement. Now I can see where that would be two different items. And so you might wanna comment um, if you see it as two different items that yes, they demonstrate the ability to receive um, feedback, but they don't always seek out feedback. So those would be the way that I would, would look at those two things. Tell me at midterm how you might, might look at that when you're giving feedback to somebody uh, about their ability to give or receive feedback or their seeking out of feedback? What might that look like? Well, I suppose with me, it would be, you know, when we do give the feedback and seeing if we notice the improvement as we're moving throughout the process, you know, if there was something that maybe needed a little bit of attention and we talked about it and there mm -hmm. was improvement, you know? Okay. So using that example, oh, Cheryl, did you have something you wanted to add? Um, mm, sorry, you had to unmute. Um, okay, okay. Can you hear? Yes, um, we can No, hear I now. agree. I mean, we're good. I mean, just the same. Okay, okay. So at midterm, you have the choice of unsatisfactory needs improvement or satisfactory. So using Tanya's example of, you know, I was giving feedback to the student, I noticed they took feedback well, um, what rating might you give them at that point in time? I would say satisfactory. Okay. If they made the adjustments and were moving forward with their knowledge base and safety. Okay, so they've made their adjustments. Um, so at midterm, one of the things you want to think about is what are you comparing them to? Remember those benchmarks? So we have this, this comment, this objective about, about where we want the student to be, but we also have to think about where the student at, at is, is at at this time or where, at what point in time we're evaluating. So we're saying, this is midterm. What do we anticipate that student will look like at midterm? versus what will, do we want them to look like at the final evaluation? So based on what Tanya is saying, this person made adjustments once they were given feedback. Is that where we want them at the final evaluation as well as at the midterm evaluation? Or is there something more? Well, we want them to continue to grow. Mm -hmm. And I didn't hear you say anything about asking for feedback at that point in time. If that feedback of the preceptor, you mean? Yes, they didn't say, hey, how could I improve myself today? Or That's true. on this objective, could you help me with? Yeah, that makes sense. We should be getting evaluated as well, for sure. So when that's a midterm evaluation and you notice, as Tanya said, they, they received feedback and they made adjustment, but they aren't making feedback, this rating at midterm might actually be needs improvement. Okay. We want to look at what is the benchmark at the final evaluation? Where do we want them to be? If we give them a satisfactory at this point in time, the student thinks they're hitting all the marks, right? Mm -hmm. And don't have to do, or maybe don't have to pay so much attention to that one until the final evaluation. So if we give a needs improvement here, that gives the student a heads up. Here's the evidence I have, as, as Tanya said. Um, response to formative feedback might be a statement that you make in the, in the midterm comments. And then you can say, encourage to seek feedback on, on performance. Then when we compare that to the final evaluation, then we say, did they hit the benchmark at the end? 
they had time then between the midterm evaluation and the final evaluation to start asking for feedback. And in the final evaluation, if you've seen them continue to respond to formative feedback, now they're asking questions about what they can do. Now you can say to them, you are satisfactory in this category. I know that's a little confusing, but I get a lot of questions about how do I score them at midterm and how do I score them at the final evaluation? Does that make sense to um, you guys or do you have some questions about that? No, that makes sense. Okay. Um, because at midterm, if we give everybody satisfactory in every category, they go, oh, I, I don't need to do anything else. I've met all of my marks. When really at midterm, you're saying, where is it that I want them to be at the final evaluation? And you're scoring them based on that final evaluation benchmark. We, not, we don't say, oh, you're only halfway through. Um, you didn't know that yet. Um, it is true, they didn't know that yet. And so then you score them in that way. It's a needs improvement area. Unless of course they were unsa unsafe or completely inadequate and then, then you have that unsatisfactory category um, and then you can give them feedback. So that's just a word about the paper evaluations and maybe how to use the scoring system. It is one of those things that you wanna check out with your clinical faculty. If you're working with different schools, um, they may, um, have very specific ways about how they fill out those evaluations and you want to know that. But that's just some thoughts about how that might be completed. Okay, in the end, the thing you want to be is consistent. Um, and so when, when you're making those evaluations, be consistent in the feedback you give, in the way that you rate each category, um, and in the comments that you make. So what are some guidelines for giving summative feedback? We've talked about some of the characteristics. We've talked about some of the pieces and parts. We've talked about preparation. So now what do you do? Just like formative feedback, you wanna find that quiet, comfortable space where both of you can be heard uninterrupted and you can have a conversation. And you wanna allow time for that conversation. I know you guys are really busy in the clinical setting, but you wanna make sure that you allow adequate time for that give and take and for that student to ask for those final questions and information from you about how they did in the course um, or how they did in the course and, and to how to proceed for the rest of the semester when you're talking about a midterm evaluation. You do want to ask the student to discuss their self-evaluation first and give some examples. Summative feedback is very much evidence-based, just like our practice. And you want that student to give some examples about how they think they met the objective. This is really helpful um, if you disagree with their self-evaluation. You can see what their thinking was about the item when they list some examples for you. You do want to praise their accurate insights. Um, and just a word about praise. Um, I have seen comments on final evaluations like you will make a great nurse. Not very evidence-based, um, very praiseworthy. Um, however, it doesn't give the students a lot of feedback or a lot of confidence in, in feedback when, when those things are said. So you do want to um, make sure that you have some evidence too um, to put on their evaluation. And so you can mark the S satisfactory, the U unsatisfactory, or NI needs improvement, but you wanna have your evidence there. And that's why there are comment sections on many evaluations so that you can write down, hey, I noticed you did this really well. You can give some specific examples. You can give some broad examples with some specific things written under them, but you want to write in um, accomplishments as well as the deficits that you see. When you're giving this written feedback verbally, you always wanna start with accomplishments. Then you wanna look at some deficits. And if there are some deficits, did you see any growth during the semester, even though it remains a deficit, something that might need improvement um, or um, ended up being minimally satisfactory um, at the end. And the last, you want to conclude with those areas for, for future growth and continued growth. And again, like with formative feedback, we wanna foster that learning orientation. You do want to help um, the student generate some of their own objectives for future growth if they haven't written any in their self-evaluation. Um, you might prompt them to do that before you meet so that you can discuss those. Um, and lastly, you do want to pay attention, just like informative feedback, 
as to how that feedback is received and acknowledge any of the students' emotional responses to that um, as needed. Um, and you might say, how did that go for you? If you ask a question like that, that's actually an, a feedback seeking question. How did that go for you? Because you want to know how they received what you said to them. It also helps check out where they're at with receiving the feedback. Um, so that can be one of your final questions. So that's giving feedback. So what are the outcomes that we're looking for for summative feedback? We have given formative feedback throughout the previous weeks and it all culminates into the summative feedback either at midterm or at the final evaluation. And if we've done things um, correctly and um, you know, given it, it, it very thoughtful consideration as we're giving feedback, this will increase the student confidence. It absolutely oh. um, their skills related to their self evaluation. These are things that ha happen in formative feedback. Also, it also helps the student trust the process of, of feedback because they can see, yeah, she gave me that feedback all along. And look, in my midterm evaluation, she noted how that went. She just didn't make identical comments about the way things were going. Um, very specific and, and observed what I was doing. She really was present with me during the semester in, in, my, in their teaching and in my learning. Um, they also gain some understanding of their own clinical strengths and weaknesses and things that they'll have to pay attention to as they're moving through the clinical setting and they can plan for growth. So those are some of the outcomes um, that we have for summative feedback. So um, I have gone through this, um, I think a little on the, on the quick side, but um, hopefully um, it made all sen made sense to you. And I'm wondering if you guys had any questions or any feedback or any thoughts, anything you would like to discuss. Becky, this is Barb. And I just wanna put two um, emphasis on what you said there. What I found is extremely important for myself at least is, is keeping notes throughout the time frame I mm. have the students so that I'm not just thinking about what happened in the last seven to 14 days that I might've had them, you know, the last couple of weeks, which is in the forefront of, of the memory, but mm -hmm. I can actually remember how they did on week four, five, six. So having those notes for me is really important when I go to create the summative feedback. Um, and then the other thing that I strive for is to make sure if possible, not all students, is it possible, mm -hmm. but I wanna make sure that I'm giving a balance so that I'm giving mm -hmm. them the positives with very concrete, as you said, very concrete examples. Um, and then there are opportunities for continued growth that I'm balancing those two so that the feedback isn't, um, isn't all one-sided. Sometimes the formative feedback can be on one side or the other, and some mm -hmm. weeks it's different. So I, I try to make sure that I have, and again, my notes help that I'm presenting a very balanced approach to that feedback that I'm giving in the midterm or at the end. Right, right, great. Thank you, Barb. Any other thoughts? Uh, this is Mary. I uh, just wanted to share that my first experience was last semester giving feedback to students in the clinical area. And it was really easy for students who do well, uh, you know, mm -hmm. who get it and who you give them feedback and they make changes, but really hard for those students who <laughs> mm -hmm. are a little resistant to feedback right. and then um, who just don't seem to like get it, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't, do you have any tips for that? Okay, well, and that's one of, the, one of the slides that I left out this time was some of those challenges. So, you know, at midterm, you're gonna get a sense of that student's receptiveness to summative feedback. Um, you probably have gotten an idea about their resistance or their acceptance, receptiveness of formative feedback along the way. Um, usually that guiding feedback is a little bit easier for people to take, although there is some resistance sometimes. Um, but when they get to this kind of graded performance where you're assigning a satisfactory, unsatisfactory or needs improvement, that's going to get them a little bit anxious. Um, and so that's why you need to be really confident and have some evidence as to what happened and be very neutral in your delivery. You know, I noticed this happened. Um, that's why you're getting a needs improvement here. Let's talk about ways that you can improve. Or um, do you have any ideas on how you might improve that entire category? 
Um, and especially when you get to the one where it says, gives and receives feedback, asks for feedback. You know, if they're sitting there resisting your feedback, and that's one of the objectives of the course or the clinical course and, and clinical outcomes, here you have, uh, you know, some evidence and that you can kind of hold up the mirror to and say, you know what, here's this objective. It's really important for you to be able to be open and receive feedback. This is not about criticizing where you are right now. It's about helping you grow into where you need to be. And so that's why the formative feedback, that's why we give you a summative statement to say, you know what, here's what I noticed over time. Here are the places where you seem to be stalled but still need to make improvement. So at that midterm summative evaluation, you can um, start making, uh, not start making, but make some um, plans for in the next few weeks, how are, how are you gonna make that change and improvement? And sometimes once you point that out, that can move them forward. Certainly if they're still resistance by, resistant by the end, that final evaluation or final summative um, feedback session, you can point that out again. And if they need a needs improvement or unsatisfactory in that area based on your evidence, then talk to your clinical faculty about that. Have a session with both the clinical faculty and you as the preceptor present with the student. Um, and it's not a session where um, you don't want to make it feel like it's two against one, but you want to make it still a comfortable session and you want to say, you know what, the reason I asked your clinical faculty here this morning is because I was having a, a little bit of trouble um, having you hear what I had to say about feedback at midterm um, and I've noticed that continued. So they're here to help give us um, some other ideas about how we can move you forward. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. great. Thanks. Gotcha. Great. Okay. Any other thoughts about that? Maybe some of the challenges you guys have seen when you're giving feedback and things that you've done? I felt it's gone pretty well with my students that I've had as far as giving feedback and they've been receptive, so. Good, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, this is Cheryl. I think it's real mm -hmm. good is like on a daily basis, every time with your student, you know, having mm -hmm. good communication back and forth, what went good, mm -hmm. what could have went better, ways you could have said something different or, um, you know, simply saying, here's some more educational material about this mm -hmm. subject, whatever right. the student's interested right. in, or usually the students will say, I don't know anything about that. And then right. you can direct them to mm -hmm. some more articles or this or that to help increase the knowledge base. But I haven't really had any issues with the evaluation forms, mainly because you're, if you do it on a regular basis, it mm -hmm. makes it a little bit easier, then there's no surprises. Right, right. And Cheryl, that's exactly what I was going to say. What you are saying is absolutely one of the best way to decrease that resistance and increase that receptiveness. The more normal you make it to give and receive right. feedback, um, the more likely they are to have number one, made the changes you suggested and see that in themselves, be better at this movement, um, but be receptive in the end. Here's how I scored you. So that's great. Thank you. Okay. Any final thoughts? <laughs>